Part three is focused on data preparation. Most data will not be received in the precise format you need to begin your analysis. The process of data preparation is where you will structure and add features to your data. This section is broken up into four chapters. The first chapter is data cleaning. This chapter will cover the basics of cleaning your data, including renaming variables, splitting text, replacing values, dropping columns, and dropping rows. These basic actions will be essential to preparing your data prior to developing insights. The second chapter is handling missing data. You may encounter situations where some of your data are missing. This chapter will cover the best practices on dealing with missing data and introduce the tools to do so. Third chapter is outliers. Outliers are observations that fall outside the expected scope of the data set. It's important to identify outliers and either choose analysis strategies that are robust to their presence or deal with them appropriately before moving into the next analysis phase. The last chapter is organizing data. This chapter will focus on sorting, filtering, filtering, and grouping your data sets. The data cleaning chapter will cover the basics of cleaning your data, including renaming variables, splitting text, replacing values, dropping columns, and dropping rows. These basic actions will be essential to preparing your data prior to developing insights. Let's begin by creating a data set we can use to work through some examples. In our case, we'll take the first few rows from the IRIS data set and create a new data frame called DF. Now let's change our column names, which contain different properties of IRIS species into snake case. This means all words are lowercase and separated by underscores. We'll do this through the use of the call names function. All right. So in this example, we are renaming each column individually by specifying what number column to adjust. So call name one, sepal length, call name two, sepal width, and so on. We can see this differs from the current data set where column names are not all lowercase and they're separated by period. So let's try that. And then let's print out the data set see what it looks like. Success. All right, let's change the column names again, but this time use camel case. This means the first word will be lowercase and all subsequent words will have the first letter capitalized. Instead of using the column number though, this time we'll use the actual name of the column we want to adjust. So instead of using one, we say select the column name that is equal to sepal length. And then we're going to set it equal to our camel case sepal length and so on. Let's try that out and then let's print it out again. And it looks like it worked. Alternatively, you can use the rename function from the dplyr package. So let's test that out real fast. So we'll attach the library and then we'll say rename the species column to be plant species. And let's print out the data frame again. And it looks like that was a success. All right, next we're gonna work on splitting text. If you've worked in a spreadsheet application before, you're likely familiar with the text to columns tool. This tool allows you to split one column of data into multiple columns based on a delimiter. This same functionality is also achievable in R through functions such as the separate function from the tidier library. So let's test this out. But first, we're going to need to attach the library. And then let's create a sample data set to test this out on. So we're going to create a one column data frame with two values, John Doe and Jane Doe, where first and last names currently have an underscore separating them. So let's run that. If that'll go. Okay. And then let's print out the data frame just to make sure it worked. Looks like it. Okay. 
So we now have a data frame with one column that contains a first name and a last name combined by an underscore. Now let's split the two names into their own separate columns. Okay, so this is a pipe operator. Alternatively, you can do this, this, I, sorry, this is what I mean to do. Um, okay, and then we're gonna use a separate function on the df variable, and we're specifying that we wanna use it on the person column and we are creating two new columns. The first column is going to be first name, and the second column is going to be last name, and the delimiter is the underscore. So let's test that out, and then let's print out the data frame to see if we were successful. And it looks like it. So let's break that down again. We first declared that df was going to be equal to the output of the function that followed by typing df and then this symbol. Next, we told the separate function that it would be altering the existing data frame called df by typing df and then the pipe symbol. We then gave the separate function three arguments. First argument was the column we were going to be editing. The second argument was the names of our two new columns first name and last name, and then finally the third argument was the delimiter, which was the underscore. We'll next go over how you can replace specific values in a data set. So let's clear all this out just so we have a fresh slate. And then let's create a test data set that we can work with. So we've got two vectors, a student's vector and a grades vector, and then we're creating a new data frame where the student column equals students and the grade column equals grades. Let's go ahead and run that. We'll print out the data frame just to make sure it worked. It looks like it. Now that our data set is assembled, let's decide what we're going, or let's decide that we're going to institute a minimum grade of 60. So we're not letting any student get a grade lower than 60. So in order to do this in our data set, we're going to need to replace any grade lower than a 60 with a 60. So in order to do that, we're going to say, take our data frame, filter for any observation of grade that is less than 60, and then take the grade column and set it equal to 60. So let's test that out and then we'll print and no value is lower than 60 now. So Janet had a 27 before and now Janet has a 60. All right, now let's go over how to drop columns and we'll use the empty cars data set to demonstrate. So we're saying df is equal to head of empty car. So that'll just take the first few rows from the empty cars data set and it will print it out just to see what it looks like. All right, next we can either drop columns by specifying the columns we want to keep or by specifying the ones we want to drop. So this example, we'll get rid of the carb column. So this last column right, right here um, by specifying that we want to keep every other column. So we say, df is equal to the subset function and we're subsetting df and we're selecting a list of columns. And in this list of columns, we basically include or specify that we want to keep every single column except for that carb column at the end. So let's try that and let's print out to see if it worked. Print df. Yeah, and it looks like it kept every column except for the card column. So alternatively, we can get rid of the gear column directly by putting a minus sign in front of this C function. So let's try that out. So we're doing the same thing. We're saying DF is equal to subset of DF, except this time we're saying we want to select everything except for gear. So we'll try that. 
Let's say print df to make sure it worked and success. Uh, one other way you could drop columns is using index numbers rather than column names. So you're basically just filtering. Um, this time we're not, you can also avoid using the subset function if you want. So we're saying df is equal to itself, uh, select all observations. So by selecting nothing before the comma, we're saying we want to keep all the rows. And then after the comma, we're letting it know what columns to keep. And in this case, we've got the minus sign again. So we're saying keep everything except for the one specified. So we want to drop the first column and then columns three through seven. So MPG would be the first column. And then we have one, two, or one, two, three. And then through four, five, six, seven. So basically we should have SIL and then VS and AM left. Let's print it out to make sure it worked. Print DF and looks like it worked. Uh, so let's break that down again, just to make sure. We use the square brackets to select a subset of our data frame and then pasted our values after the comma to declare that we were choosing columns rather than rows. So that's everything after the call, comma. And then after that, we use the minus or negative symbol to say that we're choosing columns to drop rather than columns to keep. Finally, we chose to drop columns one as well as columns three through seven. And you might have figured out that we could do something similar to drop rows. So instead of putting values after the comma, we can start selecting what rows we want to keep or get rid of by putting values before the comma. So let's run that and then let's print out DF to see what that looks like. You can see looks like it dropped rows one and two. And that's that.